So it's 7.05 p.m. And I'm going to record as a. So Lisa, it's all it's all yours. Great. OK, thank you everybody for joining. This is the parks committee meeting of community board 11. The time is 7.05. Uh, we have quorum, so we are going to get started. Um, we have a special guest today, New Yorkers for Parks. We're going to do a presentation for us. Um, I have introductions here first, but let me just quickly, I'll, I'll circle back to that just quickly. Uh, the second item on the agenda is the meeting minutes, um, which are not available. So um, they should be available by the next meeting to to review and vote on. So, um, so now we can uh, go ahead and get started with introductions. Um, Sharice, are you the only one here from your organization? Do you have other people on the line with on? Um, it's just me. You? It's just you. Okay, so you have the floor. You can go ahead and um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Sharice Palomino. I'm the director of advocacy and programs at New Yorkers for Parks. Great, thank you. Um, you can go ahead and uh, get started with your presentation. And maybe start out by just telling us who New Yorkers for Parks are. So I'm here, I'm Sharice, as I mentioned, I'm the director of program and advocacy at New Yorkers for Parks. And let me see. Did I stop sharing? I've never used WebEx to present, so just give me a minute. Can okay. you guys see my screen? Uh, we saw it for a second and then it disappeared. Okay, it looks like it's coming up. It's here, you can see it. Okay, so New Yorkers for Parks, we're the only independent citywide organization that advocates for quality parks and open spaces. We have existed for over a hundred years and we champion equitable development, distribution and maintenance in open spaces. We do this through our partnerships that we have. Um, we have a coalition called Playfair, which I'll talk a little bit about. We do advocacy work and research. And so all of this is intertwined in order for us to really be able to champion quality parks and open spaces. One of our biggest projects is called the Daffodil Project. So this started in 2001 after the September 11th attacks when a Dutch a bulb distributor donated a million daffodil bulbs to New York City to symbolize hope and resilience when they bloomed in the spring. And so we've been working with the Parks Department. It's our project. You know, they assist us with some of the logistics of storing and transporting the bulbs. We've been working with them for 21 years now. Um, and the Daffodil Project is a living memorial to the victims of 9-11, and it is the largest civic effort in New York City. We've had over 400,000 volunteers in 21 years. Um, so we provide the daffodil bulbs. People will register in August and we have six distributions in each of the five boroughs. So people can come and pick up daffodil bulbs for their community groups or for themselves and plant the bulbs um, in each in the boroughs. So we ask that all the bulbs be planted in a public space since it is a living memorial to the victims of 9-11. So look out for the daffodils starting to bloom next month. Um, we worked on a five point plan for park equity, and this is a new platform that we launched recently in the last few years, which is built on the idea that parks are a necessary infrastructure with the potential to help build equity, adapt to climate change, support public health and nurture economic development. And to achieve these five points, um, we have a playground, we have a coalition of 400 plus members. And these are the five, uh, the, these are the five um, points of our five point equity. The first is to dedicate 1% of the city budget to parks and open spaces, build more parks and ensure equitable access, fix the city's inefficient capital funding process, embark 
um, empower uh, park advocates and stewards working in our communities and to create a director of public realm position. The idea is that, which the mayor announced that he was going to do. So that was a really great um, win for us. The idea of having a public, a director of public realm is someone who's going to bridge the gap between the city agencies when it comes to developing and maintaining comprehensive, um, a comprehensive open space plan. For example, you know, if there are roadways in some parks that need fixing, there is a lot of back and forth between the parks department and DOT and having some, having a public realm director, you know, oversee some of these areas where it's easy for things to fall between the gaps we're hoping is gonna improve um, the quality of open spaces for New York. Um, jumping back to point one, 1% of the city budget, you know, that is our campaign, 1% for parks. The mayor has committed to make, um, increasing the parks budget to 1% over the course of his term. And the city council has agreed to champion this effort as well. You know, um, Last week, the mayor announced his preliminary budget where he specifically talked about building micro parks and adding more open spaces in New York City. And so we're excited about the prospect of that happening. But this all ties back into fixing the inefficient capital funding process. Um, you know, it's a very cumbersome process that the parks department, all of the agencies have to go through. Um, and there's multiple agencies that the process has to be passed through in order for capital projects, which are basically construction projects to be implemented. As you know, being on a community board, how long it takes to get capital projects in your district. But the crux of this is really the 1% ask and, and ensuring that the city is funding the parks department at 1%. 1% of the city budget is effectively a billion dollars for the parks department. Last year, we were able to successfully um, lobby for the highest parks budget that's ever um, existed, which was which is currently six six hundred eighty three million dollars, um, and that's about 06 percent of the city budget. So we want to definitely make that increase to one percent. All of these ideas that the mayor has with adding more micro parks, building out more equitable more spaces. All of this is, you know, ineffective if we don't have the parks department's operating budget at 1%. You know, they need to be able to have the adequate staffing to be able to deliver the basic services to our city parks. And so with our Playfair Coalition, there are several ways you can take action. And this is what we are having our coalition do. So if you're interested, you can email me and we can put you on our mailing list. But we want everyone to sign and share the 1% petition, which I'll share with Jeremy and he can send it out to the committee. We're asking people to testify at parks hearings. So next month will be the budget hearings. So when they um, list the date for the parks budget hearing, um, we can we can send that out with the talking points and ask people to register and testify at the hearing. We will have a Playfair rally ahead of the hearing, which will be the same day, about an hour before the hearing starts, so people can attend and support our rallies. We ask, we're going to ask people in warmer in the spring when it's warmer to table and outreach in their parks, and then we're also asking people to share and repost our social media campaigns online. So we have a social media campaign that we're pushing out next week around the budget, um, around the preliminary budget, and then. Having advocacy meetings with your city council members and with New Yorkers for parks so that we're making sure that we're capturing all of your advocacy needs and that you're also, you know, um, speaking with your council members about the park needs in your district. And so this is the advocacy calendar. I can share it with Jeremy and he can share it out with everyone. Um, this is a tentative calendar that's subject to change um, depending on you know, hearing dates or any other um, events that may be happening. I wanted to take some time to also talk about our open space profiles. And in the beginning, I mentioned we do research. And so one of the things that we do is every few years, we do an assessment of the open space in each of the city council districts. Um, previously, we were doing them by council districts, but most recently we shifted to community boards because of the redistricting. 
So we didn't focus on the council districts since they were shifting, they were getting new districts. We focused on community boards. So we launched these, um, these uh, uh, open space profiles about a year and a half ago. And so they're pretty comprehensive for each of the districts. So you can go in and um, pull up your community boards district, which I can also share with Jeremy. Um, so this is an example of what the community board, the open space profile will look like for a district. It has the legends and it like maps everything out. We have um, new metrics that include health um, and additional amenities like dog runs. We also, we also um, include environmental health issues with like tree canopy and air pollution and other health factors related to the environment. And it's also available in Spanish, all 59, all 59 community boards. And so here's just a little bit of some of the data that we have with the Bronx. And, you know, as you may know, the Bronx has the poorest health outcomes in the entire state. And so here's examples of, um, you know, here's some examples that we've pulled from the, the community board districts. And again, as we are continuing to push for the 1% for parks, New York City has to be able to address these inequalities that affect all of these communities. That means that we need more funding for the parks department, for the maintenance and operations. They need to increase the tree canopy in, a, in an equitable way by assessing the communities in greatest need. We need to reform the capital process, which we have been pushing the city council to do. The mayor has created a task force to look at ways in which the administration can handle, um, can, re can improve on the capital reform process. And we also have a bill in the city council that's sponsored by council member Shaker Krishnan, who's the chair of the parks committee. He represents Elmhurst and Jackson Heights and Queens. And that's intro 840. And it's a bill that's going to require the city to create a comprehensive plan where they are going to strategically figure out how they're going to reduce the capital process on time frame by 25%. And we want, you know, to increase the investments in parks, the open spaces. And you can sign up for our emails and um, advocate with us. So thank you. Thank you, Sharice. Uh, that was a that was a really good presentation. Thank I have you. a question. Um, what is a micro park? So what they're looking at in micro parks is that some of the areas that are like dead end spaces to convert them into green spaces. So like if there's a a dead end, but there's like just a little lot or a little plot of land, can they convert that into green spaces? Oh, okay. That's I'm sure there's plenty of those around the city. There's so many of those areas around the city, and we don't think of them as potential small parks. And so right. that's what the mayor wants to create is to make sure oh. that we convert those into some green spaces. Okay, great. Um, committee members, um, I'll defer to you to see if you guys have questions, starting with Debbie. Do you have any questions? I can't think of a question right now. Okay. And Janice, I think you you joined. Do you have any any questions for Sharice on her presentation? Maybe that wasn't. I, I saw a phone number join. I thought it was Janice. Um, okay, so I will um, open to the open it to the public to see if anybody from the public has any questions. If you could just um, raise your hand, and I'll call on you if you have any questions. I think Harry's a committee member. Uh, board member, not a committee member. No, no, I'm not on this board. I mean, on this okay, committee. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, I should, I'm sorry, you know, but that is a good point. Um, Debbie, I should ask committee members if they have any questions. I see Rich is on here also. Uh, Rich, Harry, do you guys have any, uh, any questions? Anybody? No? That, that no. means, 
that, that, that must mean you did a great job with your presentation. Oh, somebody named AJ has a question. AJ, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, I was just watching the YouTube live stream and I heard board members Lisa Soto and DM Jeremy openly okay, talking bad about the public. Okay, we're talking about the presentation well, right now. AJ, do you have any questions for our presenter? I just want to know if they would be apologized to. I'll wait. Do you have any questions for our presenter? Um, I guess he does not have questions for you. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And, um, and, uh, I have a question actually. Uh -huh. Oh, go ahead. Um, when you say micro plaza, would that also kind of fall into some of these green spaces that are say like, a in a triangle street? Like uh, there's a triangle street near Bronx house that it's just kind of park space. And some people in, in, in the neighboring building have been uh, taking it upon themselves to actually clean up and take care of that space. Um, I mean, it's already, it already got a name to it, but would that also be something like, like say to do like with the Daffodil project and stuff like that? Well, if, if you have a community group that's doing that, you can absolutely sign up for the Daffodil Project in August. It, you know, we we do it in August because we get the bulbs in September. They have to be harvest, harvest, harvested during the spring. And so then they are, arrive to us because um, they come from Europe. So, because they're not native to New York. So, um, we distribute them in the fall and they're planted in the fall before the ground starts to get hard. And then they are very resilient flowers. So they bloom during the winter. They develop during the winter and bloom briefly for the spring. But in terms of micro parks, um, there's, there was a bill that we supported that got passed in the city council, which is part of the mayor's plan, which is to have the DOT um, look at these areas that could be potentially converted into micro parks. So there's a possibility that they could consider that but um, we haven't seen like a comprehensive plan of what that's gonna look like yet. We just know that that's something that's on the mayor's agenda. So little areas that kind of already have a name, like um, I believe it's Charles Shores or- uh, it... Yeah, usually, usually if they're named, they already are identified as park space. Um, I think what they're really looking for is like the DOTs Air, sections and areas, maybe like around off ramps or dead end streets, was a big air, a big um, priority to look at. Is you know where these streets end, and if it's just asphalt slab and garbage and weeds growing there, is there you know potential to convert that to green space? Is really what they're looking at. I mean, wouldn't that be dangerous at, at an off ramp? You wouldn't use them for say like for a playground. It would be just creating some green space. So some of them won't be, as, as a micro park, some of them are not gonna be places where people are gonna sit and hang out and just chill out for. Some of them are just gonna be spaces that they can convert from like asphalt to green, right? We wanna green the city because having more plants and trees helps reduce the impacts of climate change, uh, specifically around the heat index. And so that's what they're looking at. But okay, the bill mean, just passed the city council in December, and the mayor mentions it in his um, preliminary budget. So there should be more information coming out in the next several months. Okay, because like even like say with the Daffodil project, that would, I, I I would be kind of leery about having anybody buy an off ramp, you know, <laughs> even digging in the dirt to to plant. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'd feel safer with, you know, like it, I mean. Like Allerton, you, Boston Road, Bronxwood, there's a place called, it's called Boston Plaza, which I think should be renamed anyway. Um, you know, that that's, you know, that's a good high traffic area that is safely away from the street. But like I said, it's already named. But yeah. so If you wanted to plant daffodils, say in somewhere like an off ramp, you could reach out to the NYPD Community Affairs and see if they would, you know, provide like block off one of the lanes during the planting, if if that's something that you were interested in. Okay, and when did you say uh, 
people can get the uh, the distribution of daffodils? Um, we the registration is uh, in August, so look out in July. We'll start sending you know reminders, save the dates when the registration opens, and you can register and and you know pick the quantity you want and the locate which borough you want to pick up in. Okay, because like I said, oh the one by the one by Bronx House. I know the I know it's the people that live in a in a building kind of like across the street. Mm -hmm. Um not necessarily an organization, it's just seem to be residents of that building wanting to take care of their immediate neighborhood. So uh this summer I guess I will try to reach out to them to see if they wanna uh organize to do uh daffodil planting. Okay, that'll be great. That'll be great. Thank you. Debbie, are you talking about that like triangle area that's on the side street? Or are you talking yeah, about it's in between the it's in between Bogart and Paulding and I, some itty bitty little itty bitty street. I think I know what you're talking about. And yeah, I the, feel like the, I remember Parks saying that they or I don't know if it was Parks or it was somebody that said that they were doing like a cleanup of that area. A few Parks meetings department did a few cleanups, you know, over the years that and the problem is one time when they did the, one of the cleanups, the people in that building, they had planted beautiful sunflowers and all that. And parks came and like chopped everything down. And it oh, was like, man. what are you doing? You know, we just want you to like tend the weeds or something like that, not destroy yeah. what these people have done. And yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. The two over the past two years, I've seen the people from that large building next to the next to that. You know, mm -hmm. even even the kids, they're you know they're they're making little areas of you know nice paved ways with with little bricks and rocks and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It it it's, and at night, you know, it could be eleven o'clock at night, and I see you know like about ten people from that building just sitting there chatting and and enjoying the fresh air yeah yeah and i, I think it they, i remember parks i think they were saying that it was they were trying to stop the dumping like there were some people that were dumping there for a while oh no they, oh. they uh about five years back they, they were having barbecuing there oh okay <laughs> they, they had to stop the barbecuing <laughs> yeah oh well I mean, it's the city. People, people want to barbecue where they can, <laughs> but I get exactly. it. Exactly. Um, all right. Um, are there any other questions for Sharice, board members, or the public? All right then. Um, well, Sharice, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you you coming thank to you. You coming to our meeting. Thank you. If you have any parks issues or concerns, you know, feel free to reach out to us. And um, we'll see how we can partner with you or help you. And we'll definitely be in touch um, in the summer about the daffodil project to make sure that you can share that with your constituents. Yes, great. And just, you know, we don't meet during the summer. So if you want to come yeah. back, so we'll do yes. district or maybe, yeah. Yes, yeah, so if you want to come back to one of our meetings before the summer, our last like meeting June, will probably June. be in June. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank Thank you, Sharice. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, moving on to the next item in the agenda is the gallery session. Um, please raise your hand, which is what I should have probably done before. Um, I used to just go by the the way I saw the names come up on the screen, but um, this way it makes much more sense. So um raise your hand if you would like to speak and you have two two minutes to 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 speak so we'll start uh looks like the only hand we have up right now is aj so aj go ahead you have two minutes starting now hello can you hear me yes okay for the record my name is armando aj ramos uh i was just watching the youtube live stream and i heard board members lisa soto and dm jeremy openly talking bad about roxanne delgado and robert press so i wanted to go on the record as i found that extremely inappropriate something along in the lines of roxanne complains to kim to complain and how these meetings are public. So if people share like slides or whatever, it would be public because you guys live stream it. And I believe it was a private conversation, but it was publicly shared. And I truly found that improper. And I believe these people have to be apologized to and that the board should be more aware of what they say in these meetings and what they stream on the internet. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. 
Okay, thank you. Good night. Uh, okay, anybody else? Gallery session? Anybody else like to speak? Raise your hand. Okay, so that ends the gallery session. I guess this is going to be a quick meeting. Um, are there any motions? I don't think we have any motions. There's nothing uh, to vote on. Um, is there any old business uh, committee members, uh, Debbie and um, Janice? Any old business? Yes, old business regarding the uh, Zimmerman playground and the construction. Uh, yes, there is a there, Janice. Just uh, really quick. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to tell you really quick that Parks was going to present tonight on Zimmerman, but. Um, at the last minute, they, I guess the presentation wasn't fully ready, so they're going to come to the next meeting. Okay, before the next meeting, I'd like to speak with you regarding with that um, project. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. regarding that project on um, because of the uh, the failure to have a a rest a restroom in Zimmerman. It's ridiculous. Okay, to so have we'll a what? Talk about Sorry, that. A restroom. Oh, restroom. Oh, yes, yes. No, you're absolutely okay. Right. I think that's ridiculous, yep. and I don't want to yep. go forward until that restroom is included. Okay. Uh, so yes. we're going to talk right. about that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other old business? Any new business? Okay. This looks like it will be the fastest meeting ever. I just want to. Um, I'm sorry, suggest... did you pass through the public gallery session? I did. I did. Oh, but, really? um, I'm missing them. But yeah, no, you can go ahead. It's okay. Hold on. Let me just. Sorry, I time. had someone call me and the conversation went longer than needed. Oh my God. Okay. I, I, no I, worries. Go ahead. I you go. Mention... You got two minutes starting right now. Thank you. I'm just concerned that we're not having enough parks meeting and. And unfortunately, spring is starting sooner than later because the weather has is getting warmer. And both Committee Board Seven and Committee Board Eight passed a resolution to send a letter to the mayor's office and their council people that they need more parks enforcement. Well, we need to do that too as well because the main issue we have here in Pelham Park we have this deranged woman that continues removing all the trash out of the trash can almost daily every morning, and I've been trying to. Um, catch her doing it because people tell me that she's out there in the early in the morning removing all the trash and she's a um she's a homeless woman but she's also a, either bipolar or on some kind of uh, substance abuse because obviously she's behaving abnormal but this is why we need parks enforcement because we have so many problems in the parkway and 49 precinct is so busy dealing with serious crimes so that we can't even utilize 49 precinct anymore to address issues in the parkway unless it's deals with something like a felony, like crime, like murder, assault, then they'll respond. But then they have to respond to people damaging park property, by uh, not abiding by park rules. So I was hoping we could do a resolution tonight, since it's gonna be the last meeting, um, to, to ask the mayor's office and our local council members that Committee Board 11, which also includes Palm Parkway, needs more parks enforcement. Is that possible? Because both Committee Board 8 and 7 just recently passed that resolution to send that letter to the mayor's office. Um, they did it for Michelle Parkway and they did it for Van Cortland Park. So why not for Pelham Parkway and any other park that's in CB11? Okay. Um, was that it? Did you have anything else? Yeah, I was hoping, will you be able to, to do that tonight? Because it's really urgent before the spring and summer starts that we get more park enforcement. Um, Every year we go don't... through this and we don't get enough sufficient park enforcement. And it's creating um, irre irreversible damage to the parks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whether this listens or not, we should at least ask for it. Yeah. Not asking makes them presume that we don't need park enforcement. And that's that's definitely is not the case. Uh committee members, what what do you think on that, Debbie? I think Janice? that's a good idea to pass Thank that you. resolution. I agree. That's a good this idea. Is Janice. Okay. I yeah, no, a, I, I, it's a great idea. You, Can you also ask the parks department to send someone in that area in the mornings when this woman is doing what she's doing? You know, um, what, um, Roxanne, where and and what time? Is, approximately, what time is that? 
it's between six to seven and eight, and she actually goes every morning to the uh, plaza where we have problems enough as it is on Pelham Parkway North and White Plains Road, and she changes her clothing there. She leaves personal items, some are very hygienic personal items, and she also sometimes defecates nearby, nearby there. And she, she brings this to comes woman on the bus. She's a mm -hmm. tall Caucasian woman, attractive, but seriously disturbed. And she, and I one time called her pissing on the tree and I said, hey, stop that right now. It's not, it's not bad for me. She ran away. But um, I've been coming out in the mornings and I haven't been lucky enough to catch her, but I see her, all her remains left overnight in the benches. And I pick up all her soil clothing and hygienic items, which I'm not going to discuss in details, but we need parks enforcement because she's just you one of many take problems. Take pictures, you actually. Take any take going pictures. To, Next yeah, that would be helpful. Her. Yeah, that would be helpful take to pictures. be included with a letter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I definitely will catch get a photo of her sooner than later and send to your the committee board eleven's office and and yeah. enforcement. But definitely you could please pass that resolution for more parks enforcement because if committee board seven and eight are fighting for parks enforcement and they're going to direct it all to them, and we're going to be left with less than less. We're going to be in serious problem mm -hmm. again every summer. It just gets worse and worse because our summers are longer. And unfortunately, as you, I don't have to tell anyone here, crime is rising. So NYPD is overwhelmed as it is, and they're not going to take mm -hmm. park rules violations seriously as they should because when they make damages to these parks, it's unrepairable. You could, it's never, it's never fixed. Sometimes the trees are damaged. You can't re repair trees. It's just, it's okay. just very sad. Um, okay, Roxanne, Thank your, you. your, your time, your time is up. But we, we, we do appreciate your comment. Um, and just to just to clarify, it's it's um the plaza and Pelham Parkway North, the new the relatively new one that they just built, right? Yes, they built it five years ago. Yeah, used to be okay. Yeah, I know where that is. Okay. Um, so I just need. Can I say something? Who is that? Harry. Harry, yeah, go ahead. I really think that's a police issue. What is enforcement going to do? It's in Parks Land, so it would be Parks. I understand that, but if she's defecating and she's taking her pants off. And kids are passing by. I think it's a police issue. It, you, you and I would think it's a police issue, but but between parks and police, police say it's parks issue. If they're on the, are they on park been, property or they're on the street public park in the street park? They're in the they're in the park property. Park property. Oh well. well let's I'm, I'm going to pass. Letter. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass it by myself. Myself, and I'm I'm curious to see if this is. What is going on? When you bit. pass by, please let's, take let's pictures. Do, yeah, let's do the letter to to Parks, and then if Parks tells us that they can't do it, that we need to refer it to the police, then 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 we'll then we'll do that. Go um, from I here. Just need, yeah, I, yeah. I just what, need a motion. What time? What time was it again? She said between six Talk six and eight. Between like six and eight in the morning, she said. Yeah, she said six All and right. eight in the morning. All right, I got it. Yeah, it looks like Roxanne dropped off. I don't see her anymore. Um, no, so I'm just, still here. Oh, you are? How are you hiding? Yeah. I don't. I don't even She's see you. She's on it. She's on it. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, like, I forgot to change my name. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, so I just need a motion, Debbie or or Janice. I make a motion to uh to send a letter a a resolution to send a letter to uh Parks Department asking for more uh, park enforcement agents in in the parks that are within uh, CB11. I second it. Uh, great. All right, so that motion is passed and I will um, refer it to to Jeremy and I don't know if that has, I don't know if that has to go out to the full board it probably does but I'll if it does I'll we'll make sure that that happens. Um I great. was also, I was also wondering um because then I started thinking further along Pelham Parkway. If we could find out from parks what's going on with uh, the walking path that is on uh, the Pelham Parkway north side, there's a lot of areas that are mm -hmm. unsafe to walk, either because of poor lighting or poor walkway, like large. Uh, Hot the holes and sinkholes and, and, yes. and roots and yep, all of that. Exactly what talking about. Yep. So I, they, I asked them that at the last when they did that um when they did that presentation, not for this meeting, but for um 
Well, I actually think it was for this meeting. I think it, it was, was like back in October or something. Yeah, I mentioned it because I ride my bike on Pelham Parkway and I'm like, I almost wiped out quite a few times. Like that needs, that the whole walkway needs to be fixed. My daughter has wiped out on, on uh, Pelham Parkway. You yeah, know? and so, it's dangerous so because it's, you if you wipe out, you can fall into the street. Right, it's multiple, multiple hazards. Between, yeah, like I said, yeah. So between they're gonna be, lighting, Yeah, they're going to be at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. They're going to be at the next meeting, so we can certainly ask that. Um, they're going to present on Zimmerman and and something else. I forgot what the other thing is. The two things they were going to present on. It just they were going to do it tonight, but then they it turned out that they weren't fully ready for it. So they'll be at the next meeting. Um, so yeah, we should definitely ask them. Um, ask them that. Uh, is there any other any other new business? All right. So I I have a piece of new business. Um, just want to let my um fellow committee members know that unfortunately this will be my last meeting chairing parks. Um, I do really enjoy chairing this committee. I like this committee a lot, but um, as, as some of you know, I have a, I have a young baby and <laughs> I'm missing her, her bedtime and her dinner by chairing these meetings. I, I just can't do it anymore. As she gets bigger, she needs my attention. So, um, unfortunately, this will be my last meeting, but I will follow up on these issues that we discussed today. Um, and like I said, the next meeting, um, will have, um, uh, the parks department will be here to, to, uh, to present on Zimmerman and on, there's another, I can't remember the other park, but there are two, two parks that they wanted to, to present on. And we can ask them the questions about particularly on Pelham Parkway North. Um, so with that. Um, I will adjourn the meeting. It is 742. Uh, thank you everybody for your time. Have a good evening. You also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.